if these 12, 13 year old can walk up and down the streets out here with them, I pay, I pay taxes. I have worked all my life. Why shouldn't you be? I have been, I have been openly to governments. I have been in the army and served my time. Why can't I have a handgun in my, in my, in my own home? And that is Otis McDonald fighting for the right now uh, to get a handgun of his own and be able to have it legally in his neighborhood. Um, now we're going to talk about what's at stake as far as gun rights for everyone across the country. We have got a couple of the experts here with us. Alan Gura, who has argued successfully before the Supreme Court on this very issue uh, or something very close to it. And also Dennis Hennigan, Vice President of Law and Policy for the Brady Center. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. All right, so it's been a little less than two years since we got the Heller decision, which basically was about gun rights laws here in Washington and whether or not the Second Amendment was an individual right. The court ruled that it was, but this is a federal enclave, so it only applies in those similar situations. So now we're talking about gun rights and gun laws in localities and states. That's the case before us on Tuesday. Alan, you'll be arguing. Uh, in the appellate level, you haven't won on this one so far. Why do you think you have a chance to win on Tuesday? Well, the Court of Appeals believed that it didn't have the power to give us relief, but the Supreme Court does. There's no question of that. Virtually the entire Bill of Rights has been applied against states and local governments. The Second Amendment is a normal part of the Bill of Rights. It protects a meaningful individual right, which is very important to people in this country and throughout American history. And we believe that we have a very, very strong argument uh, for why it should apply, and we believe it will apply in the end to places like Chicago. All right, which would then in turn give individuals the right to own guns with certain uh, caveats in place and, and, and gun rights laws and control laws in place. Um, Dennis, why do you think uh, they shouldn't win on Tuesday? Well, I think uh, most observers probably think that this is uh, Allen's case to lose, that the same five uh, judge majority that uh, held in his favor in Heller is going to uh, apply the Second Amendment to the states. But I think the important issue is what you just alluded to. Uh, in the Heller decision itself, not only did the court find it was a very narrow right to have guns in the home for self-defense, but in addition, the court implicitly recognized that there is still broad legislative authority to enact reasonable laws uh, to reduce the risk from that right. Uh, and we hope the court gives similar assurances in this case. After all, uh, this is clearly the most dangerous of our constitutional rights. Uh, people who exercise the right to have a gun in the home actually expose themselves to uh, three times greater risk of homicide in the home, five times greater risk of suicide in the home. Uh, this is a right that creates enormous risk for people exercising it, for their families, and for the community at large. And that's why we want the court to reaffirm the authority of legislatures at the local level and the state level to enact reasonable restrictions on the right to protect all of us uh, from, uh, from gunfire. And Alan, I would guess you'd take exception with some of that. I do. Uh, the right to keep and bear arms is primarily dangerous to criminals, and that's why we see that where the right is respected, crime tends to go down. The social science here is obviously going to be disputed, but what's important to consider is that the Supreme Court is a court of law. It's not a court of social science. And under the laws of this country in our Constitution, the right to keep and bear arms is very precious indeed. This is the one right that people need to have in a meaningful way so they can defend themselves when the door is broken down, when the police aren't there. This is what will preserve your life and enable you to exercise all of those other rights that, of course, we hold so dear. So we believe, of course, that uh, nobody wants unreasonable laws, but only one of us here believes that the way we achieve that is through a strong constitutional right to keep and bear arms. And Dennis, just a few seconds left. I want to uh, just ask you one question. Any chance Alan doesn't win this case on Tuesday? Well, of course. Uh, there are actually strong arguments on both sides. But I think that what the justices can come together on is the authority of state and local governments to enact uh, legislation to keep guns out of the wrong hands. In the oral argument in Heller, Allen himself conceded that he had no constitutional problem for, for example, licensing of gun owners. Uh, that's the kind of thing uh, that will help to keep guns out of the wrong hands and still preserve the right of law-abiding citizens to have guns. Today is actually the 16th anniversary of the effective date of the Brady Law. Uh, we want to make sure that, that statutes like the Brady Law remain on the books to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and actually that they be strengthened. We ought to extend Brady Law background checks 
to private sales at gun shows, for example. We want the Supreme Court in this case to, to say four square, those kinds of laws and regulations are entirely consist consistent with our constitutional tradition. All right, Dennis and Alan, thank you both for coming in. Always a good debate. Uh, we'll be watching on Tuesday and uh, a big case. We'll certainly uh, watch and see how it impacts millions of gun owners here in America. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you.